Are you interested in the National Geographic 76 x 350 Tabletop Reflector Telescope? Are you just interested in tabletop reflectors and wonder if this might be a good option? Check out this video. We'll look into it. Today, we're going to be reviewing the National Geographic 76 by 350 Tabletop Reflector Telescope. This little guy right here. I was looking for something for a friend and I wanted something that they could use uh, quick out on the picnic table while they're out camping, stuff like that. Nothing they had to really assemble or, or anything and I sure didn't want anything expensive. So I saw this little guy on sale. Uh, believe it or not, at Macy's. <laughs> and I thought, well, why not? It looks cute. I, it fits everything I want it to do. So let's let's grab it and try it. So I went ahead and I ordered it. Um, I got it for a little less than $50. And so I got it in. I've been playing with it for a while. And it's an interesting scope. The first thing I noticed is it's you know, National Geographic obviously doesn't manufacture it, so who does? Well, it turns out it's Explore Scientific. It's okay, I can deal with that. I'm not a huge fan, but let's see. So, I've been playing with it, and it has a lot of nice features, and it's not actually a bad scope. Uh, some of the things I really liked was the Celestron uh, version of this. It's a lot more expensive has a kind of a funky pattern on it. Um, it's just a visual thing, but that's okay. The base of this one has a uh, set of degrees around it. So as you turn the telescope, it has a yellow pointer that shows you where your degrees are. So assuming you set it up uh, pointing north to begin with, you can have a set of degrees to help you find things in the night sky. So now how do you set it up pointing north? Well, I'm glad you asked. It actually has a compass built in right here. That compass is remarkably accurate given how teeny tiny it is and all the stuff that's around it. Um, is it real good? No, but it's good enough to, to get you in the right direction uh, so that everything else is close. And as a beginner scope, that's, that's really all you, you're looking for is to get close so that you can find things in the sky because it's not real high powered anyway. So the next thing that helps you find things that I thought was really nice is over on this side you have another little pointer with a degrees wheel so that as you turn the scope up and down it shows you the degrees and elevation. Once again, is that really accurate? No, it's off between three and six degrees, but it's close enough, especially when we're talking about a $50 scope. So you can adjust the tension with this knob right here, make it tighter or looser uh, to make it easier or harder. And that's important when you're sharing a view with someone because you want to get it right, you know, loosen it up enough to where it's easy for you to move. And then when you want to show it to somebody, you can tighten it up real good and then let them see. Now, it'd be nice if they had the same idea uh, going you know left or right instead of just up and down and but that is down here it's a bolt on the bottom so that's not easy to adjust while you're out in the field but that's okay at least you got one now the telescope comes with two eyepieces uh, both of them are plastic plastic eyepieces with a metal ring now this one as you can see, metal ring, plastic eyepiece, and then it just screws together. Like such. Now the other end is threaded as well to fit the included moon filter. So if you're looking at a bright moon, you can put the moon filter on and darken it down a little bit. Now once again, you know, don't ever be looking at a full moon because there's very little detail you're going to see. It's all flat. Uh, but this really helps when you're dealing with, you know, three-quarter moon or, or something like that. 
The 20 millimeter is exactly the same. It's a fully plastic eyepiece with a metal ring. And the metal ring, of course, is threaded as well so that you can put the moon filter on here. The focuser is 100% uh, all plastic. You know, everything about it is plastic except for the retaining screw. So you need to be very careful with the eyepiece retaining screw. Don't over tighten it because if you tighten it too much, you can crack this ring right around here and uh, then nothing's ever going to be tight again. Uh, it comes with a nicer than I thought cover for the front. It came with a sticker on it warning you don't point it at the sun. It comes with another one right there saying, you know, again, don't point me at the sun, which really good idea. No, you don't want to use this uh, for an eclipse, even with the little moon filter on it. However, you could get a full uh, filter for the front and then use it for an eclipse, assuming you had a, a filter that fit good. Uh, you can always make one as well, but still. Um, so now on to the views. The views on this, I spent a little bit of time looking both in daylight and at night. And what I can tell you is the views are very good for a $50 telescope. They don't ever really get super sharp. Uh, replacing the eyepieces with something a little nicer helps. Um, I was using not only the eyepieces that came with it, uh, these little guys, but I also used my Excel LXs. These little guys, of course, fit right in. They're a little heavy, but they still fit and tighten up snug, and they improve the view considerably. So if you have better eyepieces already, uh, I'd suggest you use them. But the ones that come with it are serviceable for, you know, doing some moon, vo moon viewing uh, or, uh, you know, checking out Orion. It does a really good job. So overall, what do we think? Um, overall, this is a remarkably good telescope for $50. Uh, gets more expensive than that. Maybe not, but for $50, this is a really good deal. Uh, it's perfect for somebody who's just starting out or for somebody who wants to uh, have one with them when they go out camping or something. It's, it's excellent for that. Uh, so I think they would be very happy for that. I also like the fact that according to the documentation, uh, purchases of National Geographic products help support National Geographic, and, and I think that's, that's okay. Uh, that's a pretty good little organization. So hopefully this uh, helps you understand the National Geographic 76 by 350 Tabletop Reflector Telescope. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Be sure and subscribe, like the video, and clear skies.